Good morning. Good morning and welcome. It's Thursday morning and my name is Vivian. I'm sure you know that, that's why you're here. Today is May, what is it, the 21st? Can you believe it? It's Memorial Day weekend. Yeah, marking the days with holidays, we went from St. Patrick's Day through Easter and you know, Ramadan and Lent, and now here we are looking at Memorial Day weekend. So I am here today to teach what I want to call like a workshop, if you will, with the foam rollers. I've got a variety of foam rollers here. This is the elliptical foam roller, but it's not quite round. And I've got a perfectly round six inch in diameter. Hey, perfectly round six inch in diameter foam roller. These are, I think, measured at 36 inches, and that's not important, but just so that you know the difference, I also have a trigger point foam roller that is um, about less than half. So these are knobby and designed for, as the name would imply, trigger point for myofascial release and, uh, oh hey, good morning, <laughs> Marsha and Leslie, hey, I think you guys actually know each other. <laughs> We're all, uh, what is it, six degrees of um, separation. So keeping the introduction short, what I wanted to say first was, welcome and thanks for coming. Perhaps you're just here out of curiosity. Maybe you actually have a foam roller, or maybe you were thinking or planning to buy a foam roller and wanted to know well, what could you do with it. Also, I discovered recently when I taught a foam roller class that there were people who have a foam roller but didn't know all the things that you could do with a foam roller. So I'm gonna cover a relatively broad range of options that you could do with a foam roller uh, without making it sound like a commercial or a product endorsement of any kind. <laughs> a little background on me, my name is Vivian and I uh, lived for about 15 years as a professional dancer and then moved on into the world of fitness and now I'm in my 20th year as a fitness professional. In the past, I've also been a master instructor, so I have trained other fitness professionals on how to do Pilates, how to feel and speak Pilates, as well as how to use Pilates props. Just for the record, the foam roller is not an actual Pilates prop, although we use it now. The foam roller infiltrated into the world of Pilates via physical therapy. So with that in mind, today's goal and focus is on spine mobility, the mobilization of your spine. Just to lay down the base, baseline, your spine is a collection of bones that runs vertically, about 24 bones altogether, N not about, literally. There's seven vertebrae in the neck, there are 12 vertebrae in the rib, and there are five large lumbar vertebrae in the lower back. Easy to refer to it as seven, 12, and five, as in I eat breakfast at 12, uh, sorry, I eat breakfast at seven, <laughs> Yeah, and then you have your lunch at 12 and perhaps you have dinner at five. So to get started, I want to place the round foam roller, if you have one, short or long, place it nearby, beside you. And we'll start, start by mobilizing sideways. Let me move some of these other toys out of the way so it doesn't obstruct the view. How's that? Sitting up tall, feel those bones that are deep at the base of the buttocks. It's important to be somewhat squared off so you understand my directions. I'm going this way. As you inhale, roll the roller out to the side and feel your body go. And then return. Oh, good morning, cat. Doing a little foam roller workout. It's actually not so much a workout, but a little bit of an introduction for some people and a workshop for others. And my goal is spine mobility. So as I push the roller away, perhaps this will increase my spine mobility, lateral to the side, and then return. Whether you are palms up or palms down is really up to you, but try not to be completely reliant on the roller. Just allow the roller to take you a little further away, and then return. This is probably our sixth time, so make sure you're feeling the benefit of your spine in lateral uh, motion and then return. You're going to bring the roller to the other side. Uh, oftentimes our transitions won't be very smooth. And then up and over. Ah, oh, great. One more time, up, uh, sorry, several more times, up and over. Ooh, already I can feel that I have increased my mobility. What you're doing initially is gauging, right? Assessing, evaluating, how tight you might be, maybe you just woke up, maybe you've been up since six or seven, maybe you've done a full half marathon and now you're coming to do a little stretching. 
Come over to the side and feel, gauge, assess how far can you go while keeping your butt bones heavily anchored. This will be the last one, this way. And then return. So now, bring the foam roller in front of you, which, of course, you can do this with the shorter roller. I'm going to sit up straight first and nod my chin to chest, and then push the roller forward. Very rounded back, diving my head down, and my rounded back is like a tortoise shell. As I come back, I'm stacking the vertebrae upright. I'll dive my head forward, pushing the roller forward, and continue as about, about as far as you can. Coming back, stack up, might be inhalation to inflate, then exhalation as you go forward. These are all warm-up exercises, and when you come back, inflate and stack. While warming up, you're recognizing and assessing your spine mobility. Let's do it again, head first and pushing the roller. Come on back. For those of you who are just entering the room, just so you understand the focus is a little stretching, yeah, a little strengthening, yeah, a little balance, yes, but mostly spine mobility. So we're in a warm-up phase, mobilizing, head down, dive, forward, stretch. When returning, come back, anchor your butt bones, and come on to the upright position. Now, for those of you with the long foam roller, place the foam roller down the middle of the mat as best you can. If you don't have a foam roller or you have only the short foam roller, I recommend you do this first baseline exercise on the floor so that you're on your back. As you present yourself at the top of your foam roller, you should be sitting at the end. Make sure you're at the absolute end unless you're very short, like me. Those of you a little taller are gonna wanna be on the end because when you arrive, you'll know why. Your head should arrive on the foam roller and if not, scoot down a little bit. The placement of your feet is always about as wide as necessary, like the wide bottom of a pyramid. The wider the stance, the less likely you'll fall down. The narrower the stance, the higher the risk of falling down. So be aware of your width and your placement of feet. My arms are down by my sides. Now, all I wanna do right now is establish your baseline of mobility or immobility. So we start with just a breathing exercise. You may be flat on your back or neutral spine. As you inhale, inflate the lungs and ribs, allow for the inflation. And when exhaling, close down through the ribs. Great, once more. Now I'm sure you're expecting some kind of fireworks and some uh, comedy along the way. There's not a lot of fireworks and not a lot of comedy in a foam roller class until you fall down. Let's not fall down. Let's continue breathing to draw focus to the rib cage closing and the rib cage opening. If you're very aggressive and forcefully exhaling, your spine is probably reacting and your low back might kiss the foam roller. When inflating, if you allow for full inflation, your spine might come off the roller. We'll call that like bridging or hyperextending. I'm allowing for all of that. Feel it, recognize it, own it. Here's the last one. When I exhale, I'll come to neutral and very aware of my front ribs, which tend to flare open. I'll start with my arms up to the ceiling and draw attention to the mobility of my arm, which starts originating at the shoulder blade, which is also called the scapula. So you might notice that one arm is getting longer and shorter, longer and shorter, and I'll keep the arm short and do the same drill with arm number two. As I reach the arm to ceiling and then I retract the shoulder blade, I overextend and reach almost six inches longer and pull back, I can feel my shoulder blade uh, touching the foam roller. Doing both arms at the same time is bilateral. We'll do bilateral arm extension and shoulder blade retraction. Call it what you want, I don't need to be scientific, I just want you to feel it, pull the shoulder blades down, keeping the shoulder blade down, open the arms wide again. Those of you who are on the floor, you could still do the same exercise. Now be sure you are not holding tension in your neck. Now you're ready. Bring the arms beside you and reach forward through the fingertips and then casually lifting your head Gaze right over your knees and gaze right over your abdominals and gauge 
how high are you able to lift without straining your neck? Don't lead with your chin. Come back. We're doing this only two more times. Here we go, activating the arms. And as you exhale, blow. Blow the air out of your gut. Blow the air out of the diaphragm. Lift and feel how high did you lift. And come back down. So this is the last one, giving your best, your personal best. Arms extending, I'm exhaling, and my arms are reaching, and I have crunched or flattened my abdomen. Stay here and make sure that you're not holding tension in your neck. If you could count which vertebrae is this, thoracics number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, mm, I don't know. Just try to identify where you are at your rib cage, and then come down. Yes, that was for baseline purposes. So roll down, come to seated, and place the foam roller now <laughs> horizontally. You had to think, what's the word? Horizontally, horizontal. Those of you with the short foam roller, you could do the same. Hey Brad, got a foam roller? Come on down to the floor, join me. When you roll back, this foam roller is probably going to land at the bulk of your rib cage. And that's okay, start there. Identify the shoulder blade relationship to the foam roller. Identify the shoulder blade relationship to the foam roller. I need to be just a little bit further back with my roll. Oh yeah, there you go, oh yeah. Ooh, so now I can feel my shoulder blades fairly comfortable finding a place on the foam roller. Yes, now that my arms are up, I can very slowly recline my head backward, and if you need support, support with your hands, and allow your spine to go to hyperextension, or we can just call it extension. You may want to use your hands to support your head so the head doesn't feel like a cannonball <laughs> dropping to the floor. Appreciate spine mobility, and then lifting your head, return, notice the closing of the rib cage and the riveting of your navel. As we go again, we're improving thoracic mobility, the rib cage spine, rolling back and then returning forward. Your eyes, boom, down past your inner thighs. This is my third time, inhale, inflate, and then lifting the head, assist if necessary, chin toward the chest with a crunch of the abdomen. Once more. Notice my spine hyperextending, making sort of a bridge-like back, and then forward. Now this time I'll bring my feet in just a little bit closer, and I'll stop when I think my head and my spine are neutral, and begin lifting my rear end. Now, the lifting of the rear end constitutes bridge or bridging, and right away the benefit is strengthening the buttocks and the hamstrings. But I'm using now my body weight on the foam roller for some massaging benefits, if you will. I am rolling along the spine below the, the medial border of the scapula and rolling ooh, to the last rib, to the last rib. Thoracics, oh, what? Number 12. So don't worry if you don't know the actual names and the numbers, just feel it. Again, using my feet, my hamstrings, pushing back and pulling forward. This is literally a push back and a pull forward. If you're not able to tolerate anymore, well then put your butt down. Okay. So from here, I'll pause. I'm again, shoulder blades on the roller, keeping my hips lifted carefully, gracefully. I'm lowering my head down. Ooh, feeling for more expansion if you let your arms go down to the sides, and of course much more if your arms go over your head, but be careful, engage your pace. Ah, now lowering the hips, and again, be careful, hips are down. Right now I feel like my head is a cannonball. I'm going to support my head up, 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 oof. Come to seated. You may want to kick it out, hands behind your thighs. Yes, roll through the spine, undulate a few times, undulating a few times. Now, we're going to turn over and 
use the foam roller, short or long, to um, facilitate thread the needle. Now you may not need the foam roller to thread the needle, but here we go. On all fours, the back of your hand and the wrist arrive on the roller. Place your head on the floor and be sure that you're relatively comfortable and not in any kind of pain. Shoulder on the floor. My arm is up and I could also increase or intensify the rotation. Intend to rotate. Ah. Ooh, take a deep breath and then return. I'm coming up to switch the foam roller to the other side. You might discover that the foam roller seems a little high. I, I feel that way. So I'm pushing a roller with my arm, landing on my big cannonball head, shoulder barely touching the floor, and the arm releases to the ceiling. In case you turned away from me, trust that I am doing the same position you are. Look away and raise the arm up toward the ceiling. Ah, and then return. In this next exercise, for spine mobility, I'm using the foam roller in front. The foam roller in front, but keeping my pelvis back. As I push the roller forward, notice this is very much like, um, I think it's called the puppy dog or downward dog variation. Here we are. I keep my fingers splayed wide open so I don't have to feel like I hold on to the roller. I'm keeping my fingers splayed open and rolling basically my wrist and forearms, not so much my hands on the roller. Using my hip action, I am pushing forward about six to 10 inches of travel and pulling back. Six to 10 inches of travel and now experimenting. Like I've given you a passport and you can travel halfway around the world now. Be cautious, pushing forward, pulling back. So my head is not touching the floor at all. As I come back, I am now going to round my spine and come to all fours. Get a little more weight on the hands and just cat-cow back stretch. The cat-cow back stretch, rounding and release. We'll do one more. From here, we'll do one of my favorite all four exercises on the foam roller. So if you have a short foam roller, this will work. If you have only a ball, this will work. Although I believe the ball poses a much bigger challenge. Here's the standard foam roller. My thighs and knees and hips are all squared off. My forearms turn palms up so that I can push the foam roller back and forth. I am using my shoulder pivoting joint to push the roller back and forth. I am not doing this with my head or my legs. This motion comes from the shoulder as I push the roller back and forth. Check your Pilates abdominals and your Pilates spine and your Pilates awareness and then pause when the roller is basically under the chest. Bring your knees in closer and closer and closer and perhaps you'll close your legs. Straighten one leg behind you. Keep it straight. Those of you on the ball, your forearms were closed on the ball. Here we are with the leg nice and straight, and for balance purposes, straighten the opposing arm. Now the tendency is to overlift the leg and not lift the arm high enough. So find yourself woo, with your proprioceptive radar on high, lifting both arm and leg. Stay here. For those of you who are on the ball, I'm sure you know you can't really raise your arm. All right? Come on down. Don't worry. And before we move on, assess. You're very squared off. Abdominals pulled in, long through the neck, leg number two. If you're on the ball, your forearms were closed, making the exercise much more challenging. Without looking around, when you're ready, those of you on the roller, straighten the opposing arm. Stay for a moment. This exercise, those of us on the roller, are, is more, 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 more difficult when you close your eyes. Go! All right. Oof. And then you can come on down. Once again, with knees open, pushing the roller, head sunk in between the arms. You can um, oscillate forward and back. Small action, very deliberate, forward and back. Yes. Place the foam roller again, perpendicular. Turn again, 
onto your rear end. This time, the foam roller will be right near, well, if you don't know your anatomy, it's the latissimus dorsi, where your arm attaches to the torso. And if you were a bird, those would be your wing muscles, your lats. For ladies, it's that bulk of muscle that goes right underneath that bra strap right there. All right, once you've arrived, you are going to stay on your side, on the hip, with your knees could be stacked or unstacked, but just have some stabilization through the feet. My hands behind with elbows wide. First, I'm going to rotate backward and then return forward, just to get the baseline. I feel like I'm gonna fall off, so I scoot it a little bit forward. I can feel my body weight on that shoulder blade behind me, and I have returned to my lats and armpit area. Not that comfortable. And yet, ooh, there's a massaging effect. I'm going from ceiling to the wall in front of me. Again, rotating. Allow for a little bit of ease, a little forgiving through the hips. No need to be so rigid. All right, here we go. This is number uh, three, I think. I am inhaling on this rotation, oh, sorry, exhaling on rotation, and then inhale. This time, intend to go back a little bit further, opening and take your head with you. What? Oy. Oh my gosh. Now, a little more strict, not allowing your legs to move much at all. The pelvis is as about as steady as you can manage. You rotate. You've eased into this rotation. And we'll do one more. Oh. This will be the last time, and when you roll back, you'll be able to stay for a moment. Make sure that you're looking up toward the ceiling or back behind you. I will be opening my arms. Arms are very heavy when they're straightened, long levers. Gravity might be pulling you down. Careful, if you release the head, be careful of your neck. You can't stay here very long, but try to feel a sense of release across the chest, across the chest and the fronts of your shoulders. As I recover, my back arm catches my head, save your head, and return. Ah, come all the way forward, and one more time going all the way back. This is going to be the last time, close and come all the way forward, so now you're beyond the sideline into a forward roll. Mm. Yes, you'll need to sit up, and I find it easier to transition by bringing the roller to the other side. The target area was the bulk of muscles, your lats. Arrive on it, oh, that's my ribs. There we go, ribs. Here are my legs, stacked or staggered. Ooh. Yep, I'm on it now. Hands behind my head. Yeah, I feel it. I'm a little bit too behind, so let me come forward. The initial action was rolling. Might be a little scary, so be cautious. We did about six of these. Every time you rolled back, you were sort of pushing the envelope, if you will, going a little bit further and a little bit further. So you are rolling along the, ooh, the sideways rotation of your body, right? You're rotating, the body's rotating along the length of the foam roller. Ooh, oh yeah, this part. Oh, this, 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 right there. Ooh, 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 that hit the spot. So here we go. Rolling back and take your head with you, and I'll go even further now, looking behind me. I can see the wall behind me, and I make an attempt to return to sideline. Keeping my legs more steady, more stabilized, less wishy-washy. Oh, oh, oh. And then this will be the time that I'm going to open my arm. So when I take that arm back, both my arms will open. I made some mention earlier about long levers, long arms, not only long but heavy. Gravity pulls them down. Be cautious. Do not throw your head back. Just have a moment long enough to appreciate chest expansion with trunk rotation and the heavy arm behind you. Oh, gosh. Back arm comes to save and rescue your head, keeping the elbow bent. Roll forward now. Your elbow might touch the roller or not. Don't worry. All we're doing is opening the chest and think of this as closing the chest. So your spine goes from sideline to open rotation 
to sidelining to closing rotation. I am just using my bottom arm minimally, but certainly using my bottom arm oh, to keep from falling on my face. Oof. Stay for a moment. Oh. And then return. And then you can give yourself a little kick. Come on up. Ooh. Come on up to seated. Yay, that felt pretty darn good. And so the next exercise is for bridging purposes. You can use the long roller or the short roller or the ball, all right, one or the other. And I'll just use my Pilates roll down to get me into place. When you arrive, make sure that you're somewhat centered on your mat so you have some bearings for alignment. I'm gonna keep my ball nearby to prove to you, you naysayers, that this can be done on the roller. First, acknowledge that the foam roller or the ball under your feet is an unstable surface. When we use these round uh, devices as an unstable surface, it's important to recognize that there is some risk of falling. Don't fall down. Pause your feet, relax your neck, feel the shoulder blades. You should have a heightened awareness of your lats and shoulder blades right now anyway. Inhale. Use your exhale, pushing through your feet, activate your butt, and arrive. Now, if you practice yoga, or you've done some gymnastics, or maybe you're one of those really bendy people, the tendency is to overlift. Try not to overlift. Do fix your clothing, though. Oh, yes, there we go. And then melting down each vertebrae, one vertebrae at a time. Those are some of the parameters that I'm looking for firmly planted feet and parallel thighs with breathing integrated movement, moving with the breath, tightening the buttocks, lifting with the pelvic thrust, but not over expanding the ribs. Keep your ribs down. One vertebrae, one vertebrae, one vertebrae at a time. This is all about spine mobility in articulation, ascending, lifting off the floor, Arrive and don't tense up your neck or face. When exhaling, actively, literally, pull down through the navel, closing the rib cage with a soft landing. Articulation descending. Those of you who've done Pilates before, you're probably already using your arms, so you know that it is arms parallel, railroad track arms, reaching above and beyond your head. Notice the shoulder blade. Keeping the buttocks toned and tightened, feel the arms getting a head start. Shoulder blade borders landing, rib, 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 the low lumbar, the pelvis, and then your arms arrive last. So what's this foam roller ball thing about? Well, let's activate those muscles now, hamstrings and glutes. As I arrive, using the ball or the roller, the round aspect of the roller, push, pull, push, pull. I don't suggest you go very far, but I do suggest you give power Power, power on the return. Four, three, two, pause with a boost in the buttocks and melt one vertebrae, one vertebrae, one vertebrae at a time. So we went from combining spine mobility, which was my theme today, to toning and tightening the buttocks and hamstrings. Let's do it one more time. Oh, and for the naysayers, here I am. I'm going to attempt, attempt to do it on the ball. Focus, inhale. Using your exhalation and deep muscles in the hamstrings and buttocks, using your deep core muscles, arrive. If you're steady enough, you can push, pull, 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 pull. I can probably do about four more, three more, two. Pause and begin the meltdown, one vertebrae, one vertebrae, one vertebrae at a time, and arms arrive. You're going to want to stretch, and here you could use the ball or the foam roller. I'll show you how we can do this with the short foam roller. The long one is just as good. Roll the pelvis off the floor and place the sacrum behind the pelvis. The place I'm, I, I'm referring to specifically is the sacrum. You know that flat bone right at the base of your spine. So here we are with your knees piled up on your chest. And if necessary, hold on to the roller. Sometimes it spits out. <laughs> okay. Straighten out the legs and oh, flex your ankles. When you hold on to one leg, you feel the stretch in the back of the legs, which is absolutely necessary after bridging. Stretch it out. Oh. 
We're going to switch legs. Because I have such short legs and I have a really tight set of quads and hip flexors, my heels could barely touch the floor. Those of you with the longer legs and or longer loose hip flexors, your heels are probably touching the floor. Allow for that. Long leg, heavy leverage, heel down. Oi, oi, oi. So here we go. Switch, catch, pull. Switch, catch, pull. And as we do this scissor exercise here, do not touch the floor. I'll just do four more. It is not recommended that you lift your head if your butt is in the air. <laughs> so leave your hips up, but keep your head down. Four more, three more, two more, and on this last one, I'll pause and I'll turn my feet out like Mary Poppins and press the soles of my feet together, sole to sole, hands grasped around the ankles, elbows pushing my knees away. If you're able to manage all of that, you're getting a nice inner thigh stretch. Hands on ankles, elbows pushing the inner thighs away. Bring your feet toward you like it's a good book and you just can't see the text. Oh, 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 okay, Oof. and straighten. Nicely done. Careful when hopping off the roller. Place the roller aside and hands behind your thighs and give it a quick rock and roll. Rock and roll. Now, there's still a direction yet that we haven't done, and we're going to now place the foam roller in front. Placing the foam roller in front. Those of you who are using the ball, it'll be forearm on the ball. Those of you who are using the short foam roller, yes, it can be done. We are very flat on the stomach with forearms over the roller. If you have a long one, of course, your forearms are about shoulders width. If you have a short foam roller, you can only go as wide as the roller itself. Close your legs and imagine you're getting narrower and narrower, skinny like beef jerky, I don't know. Push forward, pull back. And if you're a real stickler for rotation through the shoulder, you're gonna want, you're gonna want thumbs down when pulling, palms up. Now, this action requires caution and heightened awareness, not for any reason like for injury, but just so you can gauge that at every step that you're coming up a tiny bit higher in small increments. Begin with shoulder shrug, pull to unshrug, and then begin the lift. Clench the buttocks tightly and bear down through your hips. When we do this again, imagine like you're a snake and you've just been charmed out of the basket. Long through the neck, your head just pops out of that great big basket. Shoulder down and long through the neck. Now I know that some of you are much more bendy than I am. I'm just not a back bender. So this is about as best I can do. My legs are actively heavy, my pelvis is clenched and heavy, my shoulders are down away from my ears actively. Pause at the top, meet me here. Inhale a little higher, and as you exhale, come on down. Yes, we should sit back in child's pose. The foam roller is optional. Here, I'll use my favorite roller simply because it's wider. Here, sinking the head down from the stretch at your lats and releasing through the shoulder and armpits. Breathe, 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 breathe. We have done, uh, yeah, so here's, <laughs> we've got another exercise. This would be a strengthening exercise, and here's what I learned about this. Place the foam roller down the center of your mat. If you are using a short foam roller, I believe it would have to be uh, at the sternum. Uh, but it's going to be difficult to breathe, so you got to get to business right away. So here I am. My arms, legs are long, long. I'm on fingertips and tips of toes. One arm and one leg. Lift and lower. Switch. Lift and lower. Switch. Lift and lower. Now you should be moving at your own pace, and if you're just short of throwing up, don't. Oh. Oh. <laughs> I'm just trying to keep it honest. 
I really need the length of the whole foam roller so that my pubic bone also takes on some of my weight. So decide what's best for you. Here we go, continuing the slow motion variation. My arms are open wide, as are my feet. So I feel like a flying squirrel, a flying squirrel wide open. But this is where the exercise becomes more challenging. Bring the feet down, narrower and narrower, as do the arms coming in narrower and narrower with each time you return to the floor. Ultimately, you'll just be very much hugging the roller with your legs and very much narrow, like you're sort of balancing on a balance beam, which is only four inches wide. Your foam roller, six inches wide. Four more here, three more here, and then on the last one, raise the arm and leg, but reduce the number of fingers on the floor. I have just one finger on the floor and one, well, one big toe. Pulse, 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 four, three, two, come down. You can start with all five, fingers and thumb, arm, leg, levitate and hold, reduce finger, 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 thumb, what? Pulse, 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 pulse. Concentrate, breathe, please, four, three, two, and one. Whew. Sit back and rest. We snuck in a strengthening and balance exercise there. Sink your head down, please, and rest. Let's go back to the very first exercise now. Place the foam roller down the middle of the mat and come to sitting at the end of the foam roller. Once you place your feet nice and flat on the floor, remember, the wider the placement of the feet, like the bottom of a pyramid, the less risk of falling. But for those of you type A people who are looking for a challenge, bring your feet in a little narrower. So I've got about a fist's width between my feet. Pull your abdominals in, retracting your rib cage, rolling back. Focus, eyes on the horizon. One vertebrae, one vertebrae. Holy, 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 holy. And your arms simply come down by your side. If you're taller than about five foot seven, you probably need to scoot down. I know you do. You want your head to rest. Go back to the first exercise in which we raise our arms up to the ceiling, and you notice that your shoulder blades are mobile and sort of detached from the back. Shoulder blades are mobile. Here's my arm number two, lifting and retracting, review, um, extension, and the scapula retraction. There we go, both shoulder blades are down. Now, I'll bring my arms down beside me, but don't rest. Have an awareness of the shoulder blades. Get ready, inhale. Begin lifting your head first, Drawing the chin toward the chest. Reach and tell me the truth. Come on now. You're getting up a little higher this time than you did before. Come down slowly, soft landing. Don't lower your arms. Catch your breath. Draw the head down, chin toward your chest. Use your abdominals and the mobility of your spine. Reach and then come on down. We're going to include arms this time. Listen, your arms will start either vertically, which gives you better control, or if you want to take the chance of your arms beyond your head, you have to recognize that your ribs probably opened, and I'll start here. Inhale. I raise my arms, close my ribs, lift my head, and continue reaching with all my might, using my abs. Come down and continue with the arms. You're welcome to stop the arms here, vertically, or continue arms. Acknowledge your ribs probably opened. Inhale. Arms lifting, ribs closing, head lifting. Blow, blow, go, blow, go, blow, go. And then come down. This will be the last one. This is to heighten your awareness. Remember where you were the first time we did this? When you lift now, you should have more control, more mobility. Lift. Oh my God, I can lift almost all of my ribs. That last one is hovering. All right, and come down. All right, nicely done. Last exercise here. 
My elbows are on the floor, and I'm bringing my feet in a little narrower, and this becomes marching in place. It is knee lift. Put your foot down. Second, knee lift, and put your foot down. Those of you on a half roller, those of you on a half roller, it is your pelvis that should be lifted. It should be pelvis lifted on the foam roller. It might be a little weird and uncomfortable. Pelvis lifted on the foam roller. Going back to alternating uh, knee lift. This is knee lift. The action is knee lift. All right? Now I can do this alternating knee lift with no arms. Look, mom, no hands. This alternating knee lift could have, could have corresponding arms. Corresponding arms. Oh my God, which arm? All right, so everything comes up, baby. Uh, there we go. Arm up, be flat. That's the baseline, right? Oof. So get in a couple more. Don't worry about all the rules here. Just keep moving. Keeping your head nice and steady is also one of the ways to improve balance. And finally, close your eyes. Closing your eyes. Now, this leg action doesn't change. The leg action doesn't change. But the arm action changes. As one arm goes forward past your hips, the other arm goes back past your head. Don't fall. <laughs> I tried to look at the camera and I fell over. Concentrate. This exercise can also be made much more difficult when you close your eyes. And those of you dancers out there who have really good balance and proprioception, instead, instead of landing the whole foot on the floor, flat-footed, how about, how about just the heel? So the round surface of the heel is probably like two inches by two inches along the bottom of your heel, and only your heel, what, is touching the floor. All right, I'm giving you the whole shebang right there. You got everything out of me now, all right? There are plenty more exercises, and if you come back next week, I'll show you some more. Arrive on your back, pushing your roller aside, hug your knees into your chest, allow your head and neck to rest. Oftentimes when doing a new exercise or in an unfamiliar position, the neck is under an incredible amount of strain and you don't even realize it. So let's turn the knees to the front toward the camera and then your head in the opposite direction. Take a moment and rest. There's no risk of falling. You're already on the floor. You can straighten this top leg out in front of you. If your arm is long enough, you might be able to grab your toe. Keep rolling your head backward and your arm behind also on the floor. Half twist, I've heard it called many other names, pinwheel. Pinwheel, I think, is when the bottom leg straightens all the way out. Notice that from head to bottom foot, north-south, and from fingertip to fingertip, east-west, I'm very sort of a pinwheel shaped. I can't think of a better analogy. Retract all knees and all elbows and roll to the other side. Legs land on the floor. Arm expands wide. The chest is broad. Relax the neck and face. If you have enough room, you may be able to straighten the leg that is behind you. If your arm is long enough, you might be able to grab your big toe. Grab your big toe. You want pinwheel? I got pinwheel. Go to your pinwheel. Oh, I got this side's tight. The bottom leg straightened out. Oh. So from head down to toe, north south, from fingertip to fingertip, east west, like a pinwheel. I hope so, anyway. Oof. Looking back to exaggerate the stretch. We're at 42 minutes now, and I am ready to finish. Retract your elbows and knees and come to your back. Whatever else you need to do, I'll just do four rolling like a balls. One, two, three, center yourself, four. Rounded back, sit a little bit taller, extending the legs, point your feet, arms overhead, arms wide, arms front, and lower your legs down. This will conclude your foam rollerama. I hope to do this again next week. About 42 minutes was my goal. If you have a foam roller or you have access to a foam roller, give it a try. Uh, oh, hey, Rosemary, I'm just finishing my foam rollerama. Girl, you just missed it. I have some fancy foam rollers, the elliptical, and I have, of course, the perfect foam roller, the standard. 
And I also have a short foam roller, but it rolled away. So I'm going to um, make this video available on my Facebook page should you want to go back. My goal today was spine mobility. You are only as healthy as your spine is mobile. We did lateral flexion, we did forward flexion, we did spine extension, and we also included rotation. We did all of those exercises by first doing a baseline exercise to determine that we were not very flexible early in the morning without much warm up, that was the point. Once we got moving and we were mobile and more aware and we got the scapula involved, then we knew that we could be more mobile. Hopefully you got something out of this. Um, I didn't want to sound like a professor or a lecturer. I wanted it to be somewhat informative and also somewhat um, accessible and useful. Hope to see you again next week. Not kidding, I'm gonna do it again. And we'll include more exercises for mobility and for strengthening and for establishing stability to improve balance. Oh, please do. All right, thank you very much everybody. I'll see you next week or come back at 12 o'clock. I'm doing regular Pilates mat on the Balance Gym Facebook page. On the Balance Gym Facebook page. Okay, love you all. Ciao, signing off.